Hey, money makers! It's our 100th episode of Money Moves. JA, thanks for sticking with us through it all. It's been a pretty amazing ride. Here's a look back from our very first episode. Hi, guys, and welcome to the very first episode of Money Moves, brought to you in association with Exim Bank's Business Advisory Service. So what was your favorite episode so far? Comment below. Well, today we're talking about a very important topic for any business. All companies, whether small, medium, or large, should have a balance sheet. Why, you may ask? Well, this financial statement provides a snapshot of what a company owns and owes, as well as the amount invested by shareholders. And trust me, you're gonna want to know this information. I'm Kalila Reynolds, and it's time for another episode of Money Moves JA, brought to you in partnership with Exim Bank's Business Advisory Service, giving you the tools to grow your business. We have with us this week, General Manager of the Finance Division at Exim Bank, Errol Barnaby. Hi, Mr. Barnaby. Thank you for joining me. Thank you, Kalila. It's a pleasure well, to be here. We are talking about a very important topic today, and this has to do with uh, preparing your balance sheet. A lot of small business owners mm -hmm. don't have a clue about accounting, never mm -hmm. took accounting in high school or college or anything, and they're just trying to feel their way through it. So whether mm -hmm. it is that you are preparing your balance sheet yourself using software like QuickBooks, or you're mm -hmm. just trying to understand what your accountant has given to you, I think it's mm -hmm. important to know. So, so walk us through it, Mr. Barnaby. First of all, what is a balance sheet? It's basically a financial position of your company at a moment in time. It, reflect, it will reflect your assets, your liability, and your equity. Um, basically, you, if you ask what is your network, your balance sheet is the one that speaks to your, your, the, 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 the position of your entity. So at that moment in time, your balance sheet should speak volume for your, your, your financial strength. So tell me what are the different parts that we need mm. to be aware of? Okay, so it will represent assets. Assets, basically it's items that you own. It can be, assets can be current, it can be tangible, it can be intangible. The assets can be non-current as well. So those are the, 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 the list of items that you own. On the other hand, you'd have some liabilities, some obligations that you you owe, and so the balance sheet should capture those and, uh, as well. And then it will show also when what amount you have you have in the business as your equity. So if you look at it, the main area, to be your assets, your liability, and your equity. Right. So intellectual property would come under intangible assets. Yes, it's, it is the form of intangible assets. But just so you know, though, that is not one of those assets that is the converted to cash. But it's one of your, your non-current assets um, item. And intellectual property, and I mentioned earlier about the goodwill, um, that could be one of an, um, intangible assets as well. And also maybe you have some trade names or trade symbols, whatever you value and put on your balance sheets. What's the difference between current and non-current assets? Basically, it's what you can convert immediately to cash. You'll have some assets like your receivables, your inventory, and so forth. Those are items that you say they are current because they, they are easily converted to, to, to cash. The others are the non-current the non are the others, such as probably a property. Um, you have motor vehicles and, and stuff like that. So those... Those the, the compares with those are the one we can easily dispose of and get some um, proceeds from. So something like equipment would fall under. It, current it's or not. Current? You can sell it easily, but uh, yes, not but the same as receivables. Right, right. The receivables it's almost calling the your your debtors to come and pay you up. That is quick cash. 
Right. Your inventory, you can sell those at any point in time. But for equipment, those are normally, no, the turnaround right. time for those normally a longer period. And so it is not, they're not deemed as, as current assets. Right. All right. So show us some examples. What does this balance sheet look like? Let's bring it okay, up. Can bring it home. What are we looking at here? Okay. So we're starting with the assets. As I mentioned, assets are what you own, the company own. So for the current assets, you have the, what you have in the bank account as cash and cash equivalent. And I put some example of a company. And just to point out that I put two years of, of, of financial data. It, normally, we like to compare the corresponding year to see all, you know, all the, 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 the assets, all these are performing. So for the current assets, we have the receivables. As I mentioned, you can convert that easily. You have inventories. And where you have other current assets, you could put their prepayments. Sometimes you have insurance when you pay up front. But you know, if in the event that insurance is canceled, then you can draw back on the balance of the, the, the life of the, the coverage. And then we have the non-current assets now, which I mentioned with the property, plant, and equipment, motor vehicle. These are not easily, as I should I say, they're not liquid as the, the, the current ones. They take some time to dispose of, and therefore they are in the non-current category. So, and then we mentioned the intangible assets. Um, the intangible assets are like goodwill. I don't know how many small businesses will have these on their books, but sometimes if you have a name out there, you can you can certainly value this your, your goodwill and put it on the on your books as a form. Anybody who would want to purchase your business will enjoy the benefit of that assets, that goodwill as well. All right. So the other item here on the on your balance sheet are the liabilities. And here you can break out between the current liabilities and the long-term liabilities. Current liabilities primarily are ob your obligations within your even within your the accounting period. So let's say for 12 months, these are these are what you you categorize as as payable within the, the accounting period are the next 12 months. The long term is more as mentioned longer than that. So you have a longer time to 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 make good on those obligations. However, sometimes what we have here, we have notes papers as long term, but sometimes a loan papers can become current because it falls you within the accounting period. And that's the time you would move that, you move that to, to the current liabilities. So it's always good to separate them because the long term obligations are should not be impactful in your on your performance for the for the for the for the, for the, the period that you're reporting on. So the attention should be on the current one that's all payable. Next, we have the equity share capital. And this is where your, your, your funding, your investment will come in. Where you have the 75 million here, it would be your, the amount that you have injected in the business. And so the, what you have after that is what your earnings over the period. Um, and these over time adds up to your, they add up to your total equity. So your equity can grow based on your performance. That is, if you're making profit, your retained earnings will be growing as well. And so your assets, while this is growing, your assets should be grow growing as well. So overall, a, a typical balance sheet, you could look at it where it's captured your, your assets, your liability, and your equity. Now, the, the question is that your assets is fundamental because it, you should not be in a position where your assets is way below your liability uh, or your equity. That means you would be insolvent. So in a typical equation, your assets should equal both your liabilities and your equity. If it's the other way around, you'll be, you'll be say, showing sign of insolvency. Mm, so, so once those equal each other, your assets equal your equity and your liability, that's what is referred to as being balanced. What is referred to as, as being balanced, in this case, where, you, where your total assets is equal to the, 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 the liabilities and your equity. That's where your balance sheet will, 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 will represent the, the, uh, a balanced situation. And that's where I, me where I mentioned that your assets should equal your, your liabilities and your, and plus your equity. Or you can also consider balance 
sheet to, to equation to your equity should equal your assets minus your liability. Where will you take the equation from? So what is needed for, to, for it to be balanced out is basically whatever you, your, your equity total, um, your retained earnings will be added to your equity. And that, that will normally come from your income statement, income and expenditure statement. So at any given time, your total assets, the total of your total assets should equal to the combination of the liabilities and the equity. That's what gives you your, your balance sheet. All right. So why do we need a balance sheet? So for most people, for most uh, small businesses, maybe any business, what is important to them is the profit and loss statement. So you look at you know, how much money did I make? Why do I need a balance sheet as opposed to that? So your income statement is reflective of your performance over a period of time. And your balance sheet is basically your, 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 your position, your financial position at a moment in time. Your, your balance sheet depends on the support of your profit and loss statement. And that's where we, where I mentioned earlier about the equity, that the, 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 whatever profit or loss you make, that will affect your equity, that will take it into your balance sheet. So it's, it's a support to your balance sheet as well. All right, let's end it there. Thank you very much, Mr. Barnaby. This has been a great help. A balance sheet reflects the financial position of a company in a moment in time. It shows the company's assets, liabilities, and equity. A good equation to remember to ensure that your company is performing well is assets equal liability plus equity. Your assets should equal your liability and equity combined. If it's the opposite, your company may face bankruptcy. So have you done a balance sheet for your business? What did you learn about your business the first time you did one? Comment below. That's it for this episode of Money Moves JA, brought to you in partnership with Exim Bank's business advisory service, giving you the tools to grow your business. Visit their website at eximbankja.com and visit my website, kalilareynolds.com, for a summary of this episode. You can click the link in the description box below. I'm Kalila Reynolds. Until next time.